at Indiana University. We are keepers of history. What was most astonishing was done in the dark, early morning, and uh, it turned from night into day. It was really the most truly interesting piece of light I've ever seen in my life. We are keepers of music. Every club had a session night. And what, of course, people had sessions at their homes when we were growing up. And you got to hear Pookie Johnson and, uh, and Wes and all of those dudes because they were the people who were playing at those sessions. And Sly and Hampton and Willis Kirk and people of that elk. That was, you know, the only opportunity really for learning. We are keepers of human experience. What was the social life like at this time? Well, uh, there was no social life for uh, Negroes at the time. Uh, it was completely segregated. Even some of the departmental clubs were close to us. Oh, really? Now, was the home economics club Well, closed? I was asked to withdraw. I was in it. I was asked to get out because the girl complained. <laughs> we are keepers of memory. The mobility was strictly hitchhiking or by walking. Taxi cabs at that time only cost uh, 15 cents any place in town, so you could get places. And you didn't tip. With a vast collection of historical media in our care, we must do more than simply keep it. We need to protect it, make it accessible, and share it. But we must act quickly. Some of our precious pieces are already well over 100 years old. Unplayable for decades because of age or obsolescence, they are crumbling to dust. This is a crisis that uh, people have talked about for years, for decades. Um, and the, the solution has been so out of anyone's reach because of expense and time that people have just watched it go on. Because of the unique position of Indiana University, we are able to actually take a very big step toward preserving these materials that experts estimate in 15 years will simply be gone. It's very worrying to be in charge of a collection that you know is, is increasingly in danger, increasingly becoming unusable because tapes have a shelf life. To know that the university has made this commitment is a great relief and a great joy for me. Here at IU, we have some 560,000 audio, video, and film objects. That's just in Bloomington. That doesn't include the other regional campuses. Our strategy is basically twofold. First, we have Memnon Archiving Services, our private partner who is part of the Sony Corporation, who are charged with digitizing the bulk of our recordings. And at peak, Memnon will digitally preserve some 600 recordings per day. And it is necessary for IU to have a smaller facility to handle the fragile items. Between the two of us, we expect to digitally preserve approximately 280,000 recordings over the next four years. So our goal is anything that we can legally clear for open access will be streamed over the web. We have a, a searchable online index right now of our collection, but people contact me every day and they're like, is it available online? And I have to say no, uh, but it will be. Now I can say it will be. At Indiana University, we are committed to ensuring that our heritage and our history live on. And I likewise said to the board at this time that Dr. Kinsey was a recognized scientist. And that the voices of the past can continue to guide the present and future. He must be protected by the university, and his right to carry on his research must be unimpaired.